Hello, welcome back to Minecraft. This is Tallin55, and today I'm going to be doing an updated version of my villager dialogue tutorial. I've gotten a lot of questions about my old 1.8 system, so I decided to redo the entire thing uh, for your benefit in a couple of hours. So, um, I added a few new features and the like, and I hope you like it. So let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial, and I will try to stay on task and focused, but I apologize if the tutorial is a little bit rambly. I tend to be bad at these kinds of things. So, um, yeah. Uh, helping us today in our object lesson will be Bob. Say hi, Bob. 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 Hi. Uh, uh, you're telling me a story? Well, I'll just keep right-clicking on you then. Wait. What is this madness? Oh. I can keep right-clicking on you. I, and you'll keep telling me stuff. What? Oh. No. What is this? What is this witchcraft? And I keep right-clicking. And, and yeah. All right. So um, that is villager dialogue at its basic, basic level. NPCs, non-player characters. You can you can have them all all over your worlds talking to random people whenever you want. People can walk up to them, people can right-click on them, people can get information, people can get gifts, people can get whatever you want them to get. And it's cool. Very cool. Alright, um, simple system. Simple, sy simple system, and I've put quite a bit of time into it. There is practically no limitation on what you can do with these guys. Again, you can do per everything from shops, though why you wouldn't just use the default trading interface, I don't know. Um, everything from shops to quest guides to quest peeps to... Basically, if, you want, if you're doing a role-playing map, this is perfect. If you're doing any kind of map, this is perfect. I mean, tutorials. The possibilities are endless. Uh, you can't have them too close together because of technical limitations. Because uh, you can't detect properly which one you clicked on, but if, if they're too close to, together. Um, but take my word for it. There are a lot of possibilities here. So, um, I think that we should go on a quest and bring Bob back some items that'll probably help him keep his train of thought instead of talking about George and Georgina. Scandalous! Um, yeah. So, let's pick up our stuff here and... There we go. Ah, it was a mighty quest, and, and, and we spent, like, hours riding that horse, and now we can grab... Oh, and an elytra. What is this madness? And a rock? Earth? What? 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 Oh, I've, I spent so much time questing. Oh, I don't know that I can get past this. No, I think I can. All right, so we got our... Joking aside, we got our, we got our items here, and we can walk up to Bob again, and um, if I... Actually, go ahead and dump these items over here real quick. That was not what I meant to dump. Okay. I mean, I mean, don't dump it at all, I guess, would be preferable. All right, so if we walk back up to Bob and we right-click on him and we keep right-clicking, you'll notice he doesn't have anything more to say. But if we hold these... Wait! Are you him? Are you the Avatar? Yay! Bob, Bob is very happy to see us. Understandably, of course. We're awesome. Um, yeah, and, and you notice that, yeah, different different trees of dialogue accessible fairly easily. You can see over there that there are not a ton of command blocks associated with this whole thing. Um, <coughs> I'm not sure if I've actually tried to hit him yet. Um, but unless you're in creative mode, you can't actually hurt him. Uh, you can't push him. Uh, but he, he turns to look at you. He's, he doesn't have no AI or anything dumb like that. He's a fully functional mob. He just doesn't seem like he wants to move, and that's great. For, again, for for an NPC, that's perfect. Um, now it's very simple how to do this. This command will give you an NPC, with one exception. You'll you'll be able to push the NPC that this thing summons. There's only there are, there are a handful of ways to fix that, and I'll get to one of them in a moment. But um, this is a this is a very complete command that'll give you practically everything you could possibly want in an NPC. Um, so it's a simple summon command, because you'd, as you'd imagine, that's what we're doing. Um, offers tag is empty, because we don't want any trades at all. Profession is two, which is, uh, that, that's summoning a, uh, priest, a purple-robed villager. Custom name visible means the name will not be visible unless it's, you're mousing over them. 
custom name NPC Larry, meaning their name will be NPC Larry. Invulnerable, meaning that you can't kill them unless you're in creative mode. <coughs> Excuse me. No, no gravity, meaning that they won't f go up or down, so you can pose them, like make them float in the air or whatever you want. That's optional. Um, attributes. Uh, that's a that's a list, and you can have whatever you want. You can give more health. You can do whatever you want, but. In this case, we just want to make them really, really slow. So just copy that, that down exactly. Most of these will be in the description, but I'm, I'm feel free to pause the video if, if I forget to do that. And uh, yeah, uh, you can copy that down exactly. Uh, all right, so we're going to actually go ahead and run that command. Zoink. And we can push this guy. I don't want to push him, but um, trust me, you, could, you can push this guy unless we add him to a team which you'll see over here. So we can add him to a scoreboard team and we can set the collision rule to never so that he will never be pushable. Yay. So uh, scoreboard teams add NPC, right? Scoreboard teams and uh, scoreboard teams option NPC collision rule never. That means that, it, that, that, that mobs that are on this team, players or otherwise, will not be able to push or be pushed by any, but any other entities, which is excellent. Uh, I don't know about water, well, this one definitely doesn't. This does definitely doesn't prevent being pushed by water, um, and I'm pretty sure you can't do that. You can't prevent being pushed by water with this. But if you're putting your NPC in water, you're being not very nice. So, be nice to your NPCs. Be humane. D don't don't st stick your uh, poor little villager in the middle of a river, because because they won't like it. <coughs> All right. So what you need to do? Don't forget the step. You need to add your NPC to the team, t creating the team and making it so it's unpushable isn't enough you actually have to add the npc to the team so scoreboard teams join npc at e type equals villager c equals one there we go so now theoretically we can't push larry yay larry is unpushable that's good that's very good all right so we now have our npc but you'll notice if i hold my mouse real quick here real quick ah not real quick, real, real, real close here. There we go. You can hear that I'm clicking furiously and he's not doing anything because he's not set up to do any dialogue yet, as you would probably imagine. So let's go ahead and um, I'll, I'll jump into the actual command block tutorial. All right. Bam. You just want these lines here. You want to add two objectives. You will need NPC talk, which is a dummy, and you need M N NPC click, which is a stat dot talked to villager. This one increments if you talk to a villager. This one increments only if you actually like run commands on it which is good so, so let's actually go ahead and look at these command blocks so first of all um when, when npc click goes up to one it uh npc talk increments by one and you can see that if i right if i right click here one two three four five six seven eight tons of numbers all right and um it goes back to zero if i walk farther away notice the back to zero it's hard to see because the, the there's a such poor contrast um you can only really see if it's there's something dark in the background it's hard to see against the ugly sandstone but yeah um zero and it'll go back to zero if i walk back um and the same is true for a tag that i have which is uh you may be wondering why i'm not just showing you the command blocks i will i'll do that so you can you can pause the video and look at them but I'm explaining the concepts so you can figure it out on your own if you want to, if you're into that kind of thing, which I, I think a lot of people are who like who are learning command blocks. Um, and also because it's, it's easier to understand it conceptually than it is to show you the command blocks because they, they feel a little bit out there if you're not used to command blocks. So essentially what's going on here? Um, essentially what is going on is I am scoreboard, uh, scoreboard players tag toll 155 list all right so i don't have any tags at the moment but when i right click on the villager i have the npc say tag now what's going on is clicking on the villager if i back off real quick um clicking on the villager um it, 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 it increments your your count score ah uh, sorry your your click score so it, it is detected that you are clicked that you've clicked right uh, villagers, which have been marked with the NPC tag, all right, look around them in a four-block radius, if I recall correctly. Um, they look around you. In a, they, they look around them in a four-block radius for players who have clicked on them. Players who have clicked on them then have their score incremented by one in talk. 
and players with certain talk scores receive a message. Now, the reason it only sends the message once, even though my score is still one, and it, it's not just spamming, wait, are you him, are you the avatar, wait, are you him, Do you, are you the avatar, over and over and over again, is because I have the NPC say tag. And if I, if I'm, if I remove the tag real quick, uh, it's spamming because I've still got the score and, and every player with the score is receiving. So the tag is there to ensure, so the tag is added one tick after I receive the message. So, and, and the message filters out players who have the tag. Um, so if I add the tag back, right, you'll see that it stopped spamming. We, we can go back to the original message um, and you can see that it, it goes through and plays once, right? Uh, and I can keep clicking and it keeps incrementing but it doesn't actually do anything because I haven't gotten any, anything programmed up there. You talk to a villager, uh, your, your click score increments, and that is used to detect that you've clicked, that, then that's reset. Um, and and b b before it's reset, uh, your, it's used to increment your NPC talk score. And that is used to determine what message you're sent. So I'm going to assume that that was somewhat understandable, and I'll just show you the command blocks now. Um, Score with players add. So this 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 is the one that converts click into talk. This is the one, and these two are the ones that make it so that your first. So this is this is the tag that gets removed, so that it doesn't block you from receiving the message when you come back. Um, and this is the one that sets your NPC talk to zero. So so these two here reset your message, so that you you can receive new messages when you come back. Um, so 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 if you walk away and come back you can receive messages again these five here um, yeah these five run for all NPCs that you have in the world at once um, so so these should be these three should be the first three and these two should be the last two okay that is very important and then these ones in the middle are the messages that are sent uh, don't be discouraged. This this here is detecting the four items and, and changing over the to the other tree. Um, not actual like the, these are all individual messages, but these are like detecting items, clearing items, that kind of thing for the purposes of the demonstration. <coughs> Don't feel like you have to add these. If you want a simple NPC that is just a handful of messages, then you need like five or six command blocks. It's pretty simple. Uh, well, five, five for the general system and then a handful for however many messages you want here. This one here adds the tag for NPC say so you don't get the message message spammed. And this one sets your NPC click score to zero. Very straightforward. I think you probably understand what's going on. All right, so once you've got these five on the outside setup, you need to set up dialogues on the inside. So what's going on here is... um. Uh, what's, what's going on here is you're, you're executing... Just like this one executes at generic NPCs. So, uh, well, sorry, not, not this one. This one executes at generic NPCs. Tag equals NPC. Um, so these, these ones are generic. They, they, they run for all NPCs in the world. So make sure that you tag your NPCs with NPC in general or any, any, anything you want, but something that you will remember and is simple. I use NPC for all NPCs, and then I also add tags NPC1, NPC2 for specific NPCs so I can keep track of which ones will have what messages. So this is NPC1, this is NPC2. Technically, this is both NPC1 and NPC2. Um, I just use that to keep track of which dialogue train of thought should be running at, at, a, at a time. Um, this is in charge of switching that once you get the items, right? So the concept is if you have a an, 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 uh, villager with a tag of NPC1, Tell all players in a radius of four who have the talk state of one and have not yet received the tag, and this is important because this is what prevents it from being spammed, tell them the big fancy message. I recommend using a third-party generator like minecraftjson.com to generate your Telerauz. It's way easier that way. Um, like, like way easier. Uh, but you can do it yourself if you're a totes OP command blocker person. I don't know why I just said totes unironically. I, I mean, it wasn't totally un unironically, but I digress. Um, <laughs> second message is the exact same, except that it's checking for a NPC talk score of two. And this is NPC talk score of three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, I think this is eight, right? Yeah, this is this is a score of seven actually. Yeah, so so seven, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You can run multiple things at the same time, like this particle and the message at the same time, just by having the same requirements, and so they'll run simultaneously. You can have multiple messages, you can have multiple particles, you can have multiple sounds, um, and you can execute them all at the location of the villager. Nice and simple. Now, if you want to have multiple dialogue chains, and this is this is important, this is where you get like the create the creative element. Uh, you need to have something which switches and allows you to interface multiple cha multiple dialogue chains. Um, now, I, I could have like I could skip. I, I can use I can just add, for example, I can just duplicate this one and then make this a. Uh, I think this is the this is the particle, right? Uh, and I can make that check for a score of nine. Oops, nine, right? And then walk over here and I say, hi, hi. That's seven, and that's nine. Right? I can skip. Very simple, straightforward. Um, but you can't, but, but it's sometimes, but you don't want people to have to click through to some extra thing. You, you want to be able to, like, have conditions under which the, the messages change, right? And that's where this chain here comes in. Uh, this one, first of all, it checks, um, basically th this chain, if, if you have the items in your inventory and you've clicked on the villager, so execute that, the villager, you tag with that NPC1, uh, it tags players with a tag, which later command blocks use to change it over to NPC2, but it, 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 uh, it uses, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty simple, um, I guess, yeah, you can just copy these down if you want. You don't have to, but you can. Um, and you convert. So so if you if the requirements are met, you receive it, you as a player receive a tag, and then that tag is used to convert NPCs around you. Presumably the one you were talking to, right? Into um, the... Uh, and technically, it's another NPC entirely. But from your perspective, because all you're changing is one tag, it's the same entity. So you can interact with it, and it'll have a different response, right? Um, so I can go ahead and manually trigger that by scoreboard players tag at e type equals and uh, <laughs> type equals entity type equals villager c equals one. Um, uh, uh, remove NPC one. Now if I walk off and come back, you'll notice there's no message because it's not detecting NPC one. I can add the NPC2 tag, though, and if I walk back, wait, are you him? Are you the avatar? And if I add the NPC1 tag and don't remove the NPC2 tag, you can actually give both messages at once, because it's detecting both, it, it thinks that the one entity is actually two entities, and you can click through as well, right? Very, very cool, lots of flexibility. and. This, this tutorial's dragged on a really long time. Like, my, the raw footage at this point is now 23 minutes, so I'm gonna cut it, I'm, I'm gonna cut it off here. I hope I gave you enough information. If you have any questions, please ask me down in the comment section. I'll see what I can do about posting more clarification on the individual systems. <coughs> but I'll be editing this down now, uh, to hopefully to a manageable length, not 20 minutes of tutorial for a relatively simple system. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, share, whatever. And I'll see you guys in the next video.